What if you couldn't trust your memory to be true? What if something you swore was factual ended up being slightly different? Could we be in a parallel universe? Or is there a psychological trick at play? Today, we test the believability of the Mandela Effect. Welcome to Believe in the Bizarre, where we dive into the unknown and the unusual and tell you whether or not it's believable. That is correct. And today we are talking about the Mandela Effect. So how familiar are you, um, just, just out of curiosity, how familiar are you with the Mandela Effect? Uh, vaguely. 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 Okay, that's fine. So in the absolute simplest terms, what is the Mandela Effect? The Mandela Effect is an instance of of collective misremembering. I thought you were asking me. I'm like, I just told you. I'm vaguely <laughs> yeah, I'm vaguely. And for you people out there that suck at this, because I absolutely suck at this. If you were to tell somebody, well, if you were to write somebody, like you have an aunt in a different country and you want to tell her, I was listening to this podcast and, and you want to talk about this. It's effect. E. F F E C T. Because it's cause effect. and effect. Yeah, well, that's, that's no, ne- I, I got all the then, then, thens. I got all the two, two, twos, but effect. You know what I do? The Mandela Impact. (laughs) That's what I would change it to. So where did this word come from? Because we get the the theory. The theory's grown. It's massive. Yeah. You many listeners out there probably at least have heard about this. But where did it actually come from? So there is a uh, self-described paranormal consultant. Oh, he's my favorite person. Uh, She. That's very sexist of you, you piece of shit. I assumed it was a man. Fiona Broom. Uh, and she wrote on her website that she became aware. I, I like how she, I give her credit. She didn't say I created this phenomenon. She's like, I became aware of it. So she's claiming it already existed and it just kind of struck her. After she became aware of a particularly false memory. And that was Nelson Mandela. So here's the issue, his death. Our beloved Nelson Holisasa Mandela, the founding president of our democratic nation, has departed. He passed on peacefully in the company of his family around 2050 on the 5th of December, 2013. He died for real in 2013. However, many, many, many people reported hearing about his death in the 1980s. Which I I can't I can't join in on this conversation. Why? Because I wasn't alive in the 80s. Same. Yeah, you you were close. <laughs> you, know, you were close over there. So I was not alive in the '80s, so I did not ha- I didn't have this this impact, and um, I didn't really know much much about Nelson Mandela, anyways. So here a little bit about him. So Nelson Mandela was a huge civil rights activist in the '60s. Good for him. Yeah, that's great. Things are still going on, and uh, so he was at the forefront of this in the well, '60s in, in South Africa, right? Yes, yes. So in South Africa, 1962. He was sentenced to prison. I, I looked like he was pretty much sentenced for life. Like, it was kind of like, good luck, bro. Basically, it was inciting workers' riots and strikes. So, he was in prison for a long, long, long time. Long, 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 long time. So, in 1990, he was finally released. And not only was he released, within five years, I believe it was 1994, he became president of South Africa. Can you imagine that? Like you're you're literally in jail for like thirty years, and then boom, you're president. No, like I'm trying to imagine that, like in like a modern society right now in America, like that wouldn't happen. Who's in jail? That I don't even know who's in jail. Is anybody famous in jail? Not that I can think of. Less, yeah. But anyway, so back to Fiona. A lot of people thought that he died in the 1980s. So when in 2013 it came out, and oh. Civil rights activist and former president of South Africa died in 2013. Everybody's like, wait a minute. This doesn't seem right. So that kind of sparked the idea of the Mandela effect. And then it just kind of spiraled from there. So let's dive into some of the examples. Because you, me, listeners, probably a lot of people know of some. It'll be interesting to see which which ones people know about, which ones people don't know about. So here's probably... 
interestingly enough, probably the most famous one, the Berenstain Bears. That's right? the one I think of like instantly. Yeah, which is in, you know I bet the creator of this I don't know who it is I didn't I didn't check that they're probably like yes I would love for something that I created <laughs> to go viral and I don't care if it's like a misspelling of the name I don't give a shit but if something I made got this much traction and energy yeah that's dope so here's the issue many many people I remember my sister texting me this do you remember the Berenstein Bears I was like yeah and she's like how do you remember being spelled and I did say it the S T E I N yeah Berenstein the Berenstein Bears not the case it's technically Berenstein Bears B E R E N S T A I N I, I have the videos, or the books. I had some stuff with and, the names on them. And they're spelled with the A-I-N. I probably. They have to be. Yeah, they are. Did, when you when that hit you, were you like, whoa, this is crazy? Or, or did you have a reaction to that? Um, I'm, I'm a pretty chill kind of guy. So, you know, I probably just like. Oh, that's weird. I just accepted it. Okay. How about this one? Curious George. Are you familiar with this one? Yeah. Okay. So, a lot of people, when they picture Curious George, they picture him with a tail. But alas, if you look up Curious George, there is no tail. I wasn't a big Curious George fan growing up. So, it didn't, that didn't impact me. I don't recall his appendages. Okay. Do you know about the Monopoly guy? Yeah. No, what about him? Also known the Rich Uncle Pennybags. Okay, yeah. That's a real thing. Yeah, I, I need that. <laughs> do you know the do you know the Mandela effect? No, what is that? All right, so when you when you look at when uh, picture him in your head, picture yeah. the monopoly board, right? Yes. Are there any defining qualities about him? Uh monocle, mustache, and top hat. Right. Yes. Everybody thinks that. It's not true. What? What's not true about he it? He does not have a monocle. What? There's no monocle. He never wore one. What? Never had one. He never had a monocle? I have a theory. But how's he see though? He doesn't. <laughs> I have a theory about him, and I'll, but I, I want to tell the the, the okay, story yeah, in full first. But I have a theory about good old rich uncle Pennybags. All right, this one. I, I none of this really. There's one that blows my mind, and I don't believe it, but it's true. And what that we'll what get to that one, but we're not there yet. This this okay. is still shit that doesn't really affect me. The Looney Tunes. Everybody. Remembers it being L O O N E Y T O O N S. Like tunes. Like I'm yeah. watching cartoons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the case. It's a Looney Tunes. Like I'm singing a tune. Like T- music? T U N E S. Makes no sense. No, that doesn't even look right with the O's. Right. It makes no sense. It's it's stupid. It makes no sense. But that's the way it's always been. It's always been tunes. Like I'm singing a song. This one, I, I have a theory for this one as well. So Star Wars. Okay. Do, you, do you know this? No. Okay. This one is... How many times have you heard this in your life? Luke, I am your father. Luke, a million I times. am your father. Yeah, I've heard that all the time. It's not the quote. What's the quote? The quote is, no, I am your father. It's no. He doesn't say Luke. He's the only... I mean, literally, the, like, the only two characters in the situation. He doesn't really need to say his name. Um. So the the, the actual quote... In The Empire Strikes Back is, no, I am your father. Not, Luke, I am your father. Then why is it the other way? I I have theories. Okay. I have theories. All right, I'm excited to get to them, but yeah. Oh, that's funny. I I took notes. I took little fancy notes. And uh, it's funny because the person that wrote about the Star Wars one said, while even the most diehard fans of the quintessential moment in Return of the Jedi, wrong. It's Empire Strikes Back. How are you about to write this and talk about and talk about Return of the Jedi? Get out of here. Okay, do you wear Skechers? Do you wear the footwear Skechers? Sure. Sure. You, you yeah. don't. That sounds like that wasn't very convincing. <laughs> so, this is one that kind of tripped me up a little bit, but it's not it's not, you know, it's it's, a, it's another spelling thing similar to the Looney Tunes and such. Uh if if you were to spell Skechers, how would you spell Skechers? I'm really bad at spelling, but Oh, maybe I shouldn't do this yet. <laughs> S-K-E-T-C-H-E-R-S? Yes. That is what most people think. And I I swear, 
I I can visualize that. I when I imagine walking past it because I wouldn't dare go inside because I got fashion. Um, <laughs> seeing the T in it, but there is no T in Skechers. It is not S K E T C H E R S. It is, is just S K E C H E R S. There's no T. But it's pronounced Skech. I I hey I know. <laughs> okay, I, I guess right. the, I guess the C H still makes the ch sound. All right, yeah, but well, that's my name. But a lot of yeah, you're right, Charlie. Yeah. But a lot of people do envision it with the T in it. How familiar are you with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? I actually just watched that not too long ago. Okay. Well, I went to Disney for my honeymoon. Oh, uh, that's true. That's true. I guess they maybe. Do I'm they, a man. Do they only put Disney movies on in the hotels? Uh, like <laughs> you can watch whatever you want as long as it's Disney. Actually, no, they got a lot of stuff. But my favorite channel to watch is the the Mickey Mouse. Show. Let's move on. So, um, when they're t- the, the the mirror, the fairest of them all. Yeah. A lot of people think it's mirror mirror on the wall. You know who's the fairest of them all? They don't say you know. I said you know. I'm ad-libbing a little bit. Yeah, okay. What they actually say is... Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest one of all? Magic mirror on the wall. Instead of mirror, mirror. Magic is there a theory mirror. for this too? I have I have theories for a lot of these. Okay, I'm excited to hear the theories behind them. Yeah, yeah. But So that's, that's another one. People think it's mirror, mirror on the wall. It's magic mirror on the wall. So let's get to one that really tripped me up. Okay. And I think it tripped up a lot of people because I can, I have, there's toys, there are pictures where this isn't true, but apparently the actor who played this character says, yeah, it was true. So C-3PO, another Star Wars one. Okay. And there's, this will be my last example. There's many more. You can look them up yourself. Some of them, I feel like hold very little weight. These ones I feel like have somewhat of an impact. Yeah, for sure. So C-3PO. If you put a gun to my head and said, Tyler, if you get this wrong, well, this is prior to me doing this research. If you get this <laughs> wrong, I'm pulling the trigger. Describe the color of C-3PO. And I'd be like, ha, I must have nine lives. I must be my lucky day because this is very easy. He is completely gold and bang, I'm dead. C-3PO has a silver leg. What? From his knee, his robotic um, patella. To his foot, he has a silver piece on his right leg. Really? Yes. Are there pictures? Yes. And the the actor came out and was like, "Yeah, it's always been like that. It's not like in super, all the it's movies? not like soup. Yeah, it's not like super vibrant. But yeah, he he's had a silver part. I, I I can't remember where this where I first saw this, but I saw a picture and it had like a silver leg. It might have been the newest one, like uh the the Rise of Skywalker. I was like that's weird. But apparently that's always been the case. Really? Well, they give him that red arm. Yeah. It, yeah. But it's, it's just, it, that one, that one, I was like, whoa, this is nuts. That's insane. I don't remember that at all. So let's get into possible explanations. I'm still going to hold off on my personal belief okay, yeah. for now. I'm going to get into what people think and what theorists are projecting. So the first and clearly the most possible, parallel universe Right? I've heard that before, Parallel yeah. universe. So, if you start getting into all this bullshit that nobody understands, like quantum mechanics and stuff like that, it's the idea that the Mandela effect is basically our universe, our reality, merging with a secondary reality. So it, But similar enough that things aren't drastically changes. There's not two moons in the sky. The grass isn't blue. But little things like this, where we still have some sort of remembrance from the previous universe or maybe are still original universe. Like I like it's, it's not something that you can break down to a science of like, well, it's just like a little bit of this. It's like, if you drop like a, a drop of orange juice in a glass of water, it's like, you know I mean? There's, there's no way to equate how much from one parallel universe goes into the next, but we still collectively remember it. It's just not a fact anymore in this universe. So that's one theory. There's also a type of theory that we're living in a simulation. Like um, the Matrix. Yeah, exactly like the Matrix. So then what would be the Mandela effect? Well, the Mandela effect would be like a glitch. Like think about a computer, like when a program isn't running correct. Right. Or, or an update, something boots. You know what I mean? Like if you yeah, reboot you gotta your... fix that bug. Yeah, it like, it, like a thing kept coming up. It's like, not enough space, not enough space. I'm like, <laughs> fine, you know. It. Let's get. Ma- it's not mirror mirror. It's magic mirror now. Clear, exactly. Clear yeah. up some space. 
So that that's w- one theory. Alternatively, and this is an interesting one to me, is that this was done by humans. Now, I entirely anticipate doing an episode on this in the future. Have you heard of CERN? No. What is that? It's um, C-E-R-N. Not like, you know, Kern. You know, you know. I, I, well, you know what? I'm assuming it's not Kern. I, I would take it a lot less seriously if it was Kern. Oh, Cern. no. Kern's coming. Okay. You got to you gotta put your cap locks on. C-E-R-N. So what CERN is in Switzerland, you know, where they're keeping things pretty chill, CERN is a massive particle accelerator. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what it does is it smashes atoms together fast, like really fast, like at the speed of light. So. Some conspiracy theorists assume that by doing this, by playing with the atoms, they believe that it can open up a portal to another dimension or kind of tying back to the first theory opens up a parallel dimension. Like there's a whole theory that like the world really ended in 2012 and like speed time like and that ties back to CERN as well. So CERN itself will be a really fun episode one day. But right now it's just like a tiny little tidbit of information. Oh, man. In a bigger story. That, I, I had no idea about that. That's very scary. It, dude, the idea of thinking that like what if somebody could open up a black hole? What if um, we're living in a black hole? How would we know? Uh, I... We probably wouldn't see stars at night unless time we, we're not understanding like when a star dies, but you don't see it for yeah. a long time. And I say it dies, like it's like, you know, it's croaking. It's like, oh, it's about time. Not like it blows up or yeah. something. So those are the very interesting explanations. Let's get into some of the more scientific explanations. I was going to say hooey-dooey kind of explanations. Uh, fun, fun explanations. <laughs> okay, good. Let's get into more of like what you, what you can really sink your teeth into. Yeah, let's do it. Unreliable memory, right? For everybody? Yeah. Think about this. Think about constructive memory and how your brain works it like memories are not pure when something happens you remember it but pretty much every time that you recall that memory it's it's shifted a little bit it's like a puzzle that once once you get pissed off and you flip the table like you're never going to get all the pieces back it's Listen, just i've seen enough law and order to know that witness testimony means nothing well that's that's one of the things i'm going to get to and i will get there but if you think about it it's like like memories become distorted, whether it's by your own biases. Like if you want to believe something paranormal happened, there's a better chance that you'll assume that it did. Whereas if you are realist and you don't believe in ghosts, you could see somebody possessed and you'd think, well, they have a mental illness. And that's not saying the mental illness can't, you know, I'm just saying based on your own biases, you can reconstruct your memory. You're going to see what you need, want to see based on how you yeah. see the world. Exactly. And your you know, your own imagination, peer yeah. pressure, if you're with a group of people and they're like, that was a UFO, <laughs> you're kind of like, well, it kind of looked like a shooting star. And they're like, damn it, Bobby. Damn it, Neff. It was Venus. <laughs> Another thing is, think about this, like what I was kind of talking about with the, like if, if this was the Matrix and the, and the world is a computer and you, you can only take in so much information. Well, humans are very similar. We, as creatures, I think naturally, we're like, okay, what's the gist? Wrap it up. Give me the gist. And, and there are people that train themselves to like dive in. It's kind of like the difference between knowing and understanding. Like understanding is like I completely comprehend this process. Where knowing is like, yeah, I get what it does. You know, it's funny. I don't mean to cut you off. No, 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 no. You're good. But that's kind of uh, there's something called Bloom's taxonomy in education, and that there are different levels of understanding, knowing, and that's that's actually remembering, knowing understanding i think that's how it goes right and like you just said remembering is the very bottom yes it's so basic it's just kind of like i get the gist our minds are like computers and that it's like we don't want to get bogged down yeah like what's the simplest way i can remember this night you know what i mean and that's Mm -hmm. it so here but here's where it's interesting it's kind of like and i'm asking you like there's the collective you that i'm talking to but I'm, i'm asking you have you ever had an argument with somebody where you you were both experienced something but you remember it differently yeah I'm sure that's happened to me. I think it's happened to me and you. It's, it's ha- yeah, it's happened to me. I've, yeah, I, I've had experiences with people where it they'll say something. I'm like, that's not how it happened. And I'm sure the majority of you guys out there, if you're not just staying home alone taking selfies, <laughs> you know, if you go on Facebook and somebody's every single profile picture is just them doing a selfie, don't trust those people. That's right. Don't they got nothing else to people. do. But that's how a lot of experiences work. Somebody's like, yeah, it was like you know midnight, and they're like, uh, I had to work at midnight that night. I know it was like 10 o'clock. I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't know. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, 
you just kind of make up things in your head to fit what you already thought it was. And that could be the Mandela effect. But like you said, I'm going to dive into this now. People are terrible at recalling events and crime scenes are like the perfect example. Because they'll be like, it was a guy, it was a red car, and there was shattered glass all over the ground. It's like, well, the windows weren't broken. Yeah. It was a woman, and it was a Jeep Wrangler. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> oh, I could have swore. There's, like, so many psychological tests of, like, interviewing people right after. the And, you know, it could be, like, a staged event to test the memory. But people are just so bad. And I think it's just kind of like that heightened sense of something's happening that they just it just does not recall correctly. So here you you got post event information and then priming. That's kind of what that breaks down into. So let's talk about planning evidence for a little bit. Now that sounds very um, cop like because we were talking about the crime scene <laughs> example. But think yeah. about this. Hey Charlie, don't you remember when it was Baron Steen bears instead of Baron Stain? Yes. But that that's the planning evidence. Okay. It's bias. It's I'm priming you. It it's like. Well, don't you remember hearing that Mandela died in the 80s? It's like, I'm putting that information on you. Where a very honest way would be like, those books about the bears, how do you spell the name? Because it's letting you recall it yourself. But I'm putting that on you. Wasn't it this? Or didn't he die? Yeah. And I, that happened to me with the Berenstain Bears. Like I said, my sister texted me and said, don't you remember this? But that's a part of it too. It's like, if you can get like a, a, a group of people that pass that on from person to person... You know, it kind of like, oh, yeah, I get, you know, I think I do remember being like that. Or, you know what, I, uh, I do remember being mirror, mirror, you know, something like that, where it's kind of like, if, if I put yeah. that in your head, you might be more likely to be like, I think it was, rather than thinking for yourself. Yeah. And I think that wasn't the Luke, I'm your father, wasn't that on TV? Kind Multiple of. times, right? Yes. And that, and that, that, that ties into my theory. I have one more final theory about what could be going on with the Mandela effect, and then I'll dive into, so we can have a discussion. Sure, sure. A, uh. A discussion. So this this is a perfect segue from what we were just talking about. Group think. So what is group think? Group think is a psychological phenomenon that occurs within a group of people that desire harmony, conformity, being together. That's communist. <laughs> communist. <laughs> but like that example that I was talking about earlier, where it's like if you have a group of friends and you're like, we saw a UFO. Yeah. That yeah. one that one friend might be like, that was that that was a shooting star. But they don't want to be the bad apple. They don't want to be the downer. So they'll just be like, hey, yeah, we, we saw a UFO. So it's kind of like the it's you want to fit in. If, if everybody was believing this conspiracy theory that it was always mirror, mirror on the wall or it was always Berenstein bears, you might be compelled to want to join in on the action and be like, yeah, you know what? It was. Now, I'm not discrediting people because I truly believe there are people out there that are like, this is what it was. I know for a fact it was this. This the C three BLA thing that threw me off. That's nuts to me. I still want to do more research on that because <laughs> that blows my mind. So I do think there are people that definitely believe it, but I think there's a tendency. I mean, humans are social creatures. The majority of us, you know, the most people want to be included, and I think the idea of the group think of wanting to be involved on the discussions, be in on the conspiracy. And maybe a little touch of the priming kind of makes these things take off. Mid-August, there's going to be an episode of just C-3PO's leg. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a whole damn episode. That's the end of the research on the Mandela effect. Okay. So I believe very heavily what you were getting at at the end there. I think, how many times has that scene with Darth Vader been done on Saturday Night Live? On oh. Family Guy on, you know, all these different thousand times co comedians, anything or, yeah. you know, en any type of entertainment. And all it takes is one person to mess it up and say, Luke, I'm your father. Yeah. And but also in Star Wars, you're watching Star Wars. Darth Vader can say, no, I'm your father because he's like, you're the only damn person in here hanging off with no hand. So, duh, you know, who I'm talking. I don't have to say like right now to be like, Charlie, I'm talking. It's like, well, duh. You know, what I mean, where if I'm trying to make you remember that moment like i'm we're not talking about star wars but i find a moment where i can cue that line i'm gonna say luke so you know what the hell i'm talking about right you know what i mean if i just say no i am your father you might be like, like what the f like, are you talking about exactly but if i say luke you're like oh he's doing the star wars thing <laughs> so that that's one thing i think the magic mirror on the wall and mirror mirror on the wall is the same 
I think somebody some at some time somebody said mirror mirror and it just caught on. That now that doesn't explain the sketchers, the C three PO. Like the spelling stuff and the Yeah, visual like stuff. The, the spelling stuff like but that's it yeah, those ones the spelling stuff is C three PO one I think is easy to do just because it's so similar. And I am colorblind, but do I, <laughs> I didn't I, know either though. I really thought he was all gold. I did too. But it's like nuts. but the first scene you think of is the desert scene, right? Yeah. And that's yellow reflecting up in yeah. the platinum color of you, silver, right? You're speaking on Tatooine, but yes. That's quite nerdy. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but the it's, sand in, it's interesting, though, because I asked you about the Monopoly guy, and you believed what most people believe. Here's my theory on that. The Mr. Peanut guy. Mr. Peanut, Mr. Peanut guy is very similar with the top hat and, like, the monocle. Now, they're different looking characters, but I think... I think there's some type of association between the two. And there might be more animated characters. I don't know if you'd call them animated, drawn characters that people might be drawing from. Yeah. But I, Mr. Peanut kind of fits the description of what people claim the Monopoly guy, Rich Uncle Pennybags, looks like. So I wonder, I think it's like, I think it's like, what well, you're talking about the memory where you're piecing things together. You're recalling things you saw. It's like when people say, um, in your dreams, you can't make anybody up. Anybody you see in your dreams, you saw in real life. It's right. like, well, you're pulling. From your subconscious of what you're reconstructing it to be. So I'm not saying that that's exactly what it is. I'll be honest. I tend to lean a little bit more towards the psychological components about how memory is reconstructed and very, very unreliable than the idea of parallel universes. I where where are you at? Sense. I think the psychological makes a lot more sense, but, you know... I like the idea of parallel universes. Do you do you think it's more likely to be a par- parallel universe or unreliable memory? I think unreliable memory sounds probably more accurate. Yeah. But here's the interesting thing. This is true. Like even it whether it's parallel universe or it's, you know, poorly constructed collective memory, this is a true thing. People really do honestly believe that they used to be a certain way. So whether it doesn't really now when it comes to interest and I know there's people that got to get to the bottom of it. So the how does matter, but in terms of what we're talking about, this phenomenon does exist. Oh yeah, for sure. So I would consider it believable because it's true whether or not it's parallel or a human a very interesting human no matter how phenomenon. it happens. Yeah. I I agree. I think it's believable as well. Is there one Maybe I didn't mention it, or maybe it is one I mentioned. Is there one that strikes you? Because, like, if you wouldn't, if 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 I wouldn't have found the C three PO one, the one that probably would have hit me the most is probably the Berenstein Bears one. Even though it doesn't matter to me at all, <laughs> but the C three PO one did kind of mess me up. Is probably, there one? Yeah, probably the Monopoly guy. Yeah, I think that one. You can picture of... him with the mon- the monocle. Dead, dead. Uh, yeah, I can see it right now. Never had it. That's crazy. In this universe, where um this dimension <laughs> so i would going back on what i was saying i would rate this as believable how i don't know but i it, it is true people believe these things and it's nuts i agree believable believable across the board all righty then yeah uh i'm charlie and i'm tyler this is episode two again if you guys like the content if you guys want to have your stories told whether it be a personal story or just a story you've heard of that you think we might not know about Hit us up at BelievingTheBazaar at gmail.com. But until then, join us on our next episode of Believing the Bazaar.